Hey guys, so the purpose of this video is basically just to educate everyone about their first cat show that they might be doing or if you're considering doing it. Um, and I just wanted to run through a few questions that I get asked all the time from kitten buyers. So the first being obviously who can show their cats. The answer to that is pretty much anyone. Um, anyone can show their cat, whether it's from a rescue or a pound, the RSPCA, um, or from a registered breeder. It doesn't matter really um, where you get your cat from. Um, obviously, as long as they have a good personality, that is a must. Um, if the cat is aggress like aggressive or, you know, quite timid, unfortunately, it can get disqualified um, and even banned from ever being shown again um, under the rules of the societies in Australia. Um, so, you know, it, it's always easier to start with a kitten. Um, if you keep taking a kitten out to a show, obviously, you know, by the time it's an adult, it will know the drill um, and you'll have a really, you know, easygoing cat on your hands. So the more you show your kitten, um, the better results you will get. Um, doesn't matter what breed or anything like that. Um, there's different groups allocated for different types of cats. So, you know, you've got um, your group ones, which is what my guys are in. So that's the semi-long hair ring. Um, to be honest, I've forgotten the other two, um, but group four, um, I know is for companion cats. So any type of, it has to be de-sexed, um, any type of de-sexed, uh, like kitten from RSPCA or the pound or anything like that, um, you can show, or if you've got just a de-sexed, uh, pet that does have pedigree papers, you are able to show that cat in the other rings. So it's really good exposure for your cat. It's a really good day out. Most of the time, um, the societies have great venues, so they'll be at like an RSL club or a community hall and there's good lunches and, you know, entertainment and stuff to get you through the long day. Um, usually you're at a cat show for at least eight hours of the day and when I take my guys, it's a 5am start. So it is a big day, but it's very rewarding, um, especially if you've got, you know, multiple judges attending on that day, you get to hear multiple people's opinion on your cat which is great. Um, before you do enter a show, it's always a good idea to read the standard or speak to your breeder. Um, if you've purchased a cat from a registered breeder, definitely ask, you know, do you think the cat meets the standards? Otherwise, if your cat doesn't meet the standards, um, you're probably better off just entering it in group four, which you're allowed to do. Um, so, you know, with the rag dolls, if there's a bit of white where there shouldn't be a bit of white or whatever, then I just tell people you can still show the cat just in group four. So up against, you know, like the rescue cats and stuff like that. Um, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, it's still great. So yeah, that's pretty much the main question that I get asked quite a fair bit. Um, you know, or, you know, if you do buy a cat from a registered breeder and the cat's being sh sold to you as a show quality cat, um, then it should be perfectly marked, should meet the standard. Um, the standards are available to view on the ANCATS website and also the ticker website. So before you go and purchase a cat, make sure, you know, you view the kitten, view the environment, talk to the breeder about, you know, what their experience with showing is. Um, and all of that type of stuff, and also read the standard for yourself. So, and if you do have any questions or anything like that, you should always speak to the breeder or wherever you kind of got your cat from, um, or I'm more than welcome to answer any of your questions that you have. Um, so, the most complicated part of showing that I found when I first started, um, which was about five years ago now, is... There's not much information available, unfortunately. So when it comes to forms and the different rings and things like that, like it's very confusing and there's not really a rundown of what you need to do. So first and foremost, you need to find a show that you want to enter. Um, I personally do all of the society shows in Sydney area. So I do uh, Cats New South Wales, and Cats shows and CFA shows. They're all really, really good. Um, there's a few differences between how they judge and things like that, but all in all, you know, it's a cat show. They do the same thing. Um, so yeah, basically you need to print out your form. Um, if you're doing a Cats New South Wales or CFA show, has to be printed out. You've got to fill the form out correctly and then you've got to send it back into them. Um, you can either do that by scanning and emailing it back into them or you can print it out, obviously fill it out and post it back to them and then just, you know, pay the fees with bank transfer or whatever way you want to pay your fees. Um, with NCATs, you enter the shows online. 
So it is a quicker process. Um, if you do enter an ANCAT show, I find it is easier rather than going through all the paperwork and things like that. Um, but both are pretty simple, um, as long as you fill out the forms correctly. If you do have any questions about the forms, it is easier to contact the society themselves um, because, you know, each form is different. There's different mm -hmm. judges, there's different rings, things like that. So they'd be more than happy to help you and walk you through exactly how to fill that particular form out. Um, basically, once you send the form back and you've paid your fees, roughly a week before the show begins, you'll be sent um, what's called a benching confirmation or benching slip. <clears throat> Um, that's if you do the online registration for the show with ANCATS. Um, when you receive your online benching, there will be a number allocated to your cat and you need to keep that handy for the day because um, that will tell you where exactly you need to set up your crate and things like that. Um, if you do Cats New South Wales or CFA shows, you will not get emailed a benching slip, uh, but rather your benching slip will be there to collect on the day. So a few um, societies, Catch New South Wales and CFA, they do what's called vetting. So there'll be, you know, one or two qualified vets there on the day, 100% um, qualified actual vets. Um, and basically you'll all line up before going in um, and benching your cat, which is basically setting up your crate and things like that. Um, and a vet will check out the cat for any, you know, sign of diseases, any fleas, any issues like that. Um, sometimes ANCATs do vetting as well, um, not so much that I've found, which, you know, there's not really an issue. I've never had an issue with it. Um, but yeah, so that's the start of the day, basically. With ANCATs, you just get your number, you walk in, um, you bench the cat, so you set up your crate and things like that. Um, you know, do some final grooming touches and whatever, you know, whatever you need to do. Um, and yeah, that's basically what you've got to do the first morning of of your first show um, usually there is like a um, like a show director there um, and if you do get stuck or you know something happens and you do need like urgent help or something like that you'll ask anyone anyone there at a cat show is usually more than happy to help you um, with anything they're usually the people they are very very friendly um, you know they'll do anything for you so it's really really good community um, to be a part of and once you start doing it I found you can't really stop doing it um, I absolutely love it it's a lot of fun um, it gets me through the year which is nice um, so yeah it, it is it is good um, now there are two different types of judging on the day so there's um, what's called open judging which is where you can sit and physically watch the judge judge your cat and the judge will make open verbal comments about your cat, like, oh, you know, perfect body length, you know, good good density of the coat, things like that. But then there's also closed judging. Um, on the day, you will be told if it is open or closed judging and what judge is doing open and closed judging. Um, with the closed judging, it's basically completely silent um, and sometimes you're not even allowed to watch. So it really just depends on the day. Usually there is closed judging happening if there are a lot of judges to judge your cat for the day. So you'll notice on the forms that you fill out, it will say three ring show, four ring show, five ring show, and sometimes there's six and seven ring shows. Um, basically what that means is, to put it bluntly, if there's a three ring show, you've got three chances for your cat to win or place or you know do well. Um, if there's a four ring show, you've got four chances. So the number of rings is the number of judges that are attending on the day. So you've got a three ring show, there's three different judges on the day. If there's a six ring show, there's six different judges on the day. So the more rings, in my opinion, is better. Um, you get, you know, you get more knowledge, you get more opinions on your cat, you get, you know, you get a better experience and it is a longer day, which is excellent. Um, now the cost of showing does vary. Um, if you're like myself and want to take three or four cats to a show, it can get up in the hundreds, especially if you're traveling far, it can get up into the high hundreds per show. Um, if you're just taking one cat, usually um, the cost of entering all rings is between roughly $35 to $45. So it's not too bad. Um, there's usually like raffle tickets and stuff you can buy on the day as well, which is always great because the prizes tend to be amazing. Um, and yeah, so it's it's pretty good experience um like I said before you know you do really need to um start showing your cat from a younger age like it really does make all the difference if you just kind of bring a cat out chuck it in the adult category um which is when they turn nine months by the way so anything over nine months gets bumped up to the adult category category um you know you're not gonna do well and there is always that chance you will be disqualified and you know 
if that happens it's a waste of time waste of money stuff like that so you really do need to be prepared um, it is a good idea even if you get strangers to come to your house or friends or family that the cat hasn't met before and handle the cat play with the cat any of that type of stuff um, it definitely makes the world of difference um, you know, a judge always likes a cat that's purring and friendly and all over them. Some people I've heard have even like trained their show cats to specifically jump up and like lick faces and all of that type of stuff um, just to get, you know, in the judge's good books. Um, there was one uh, competitor that I heard, apparently the judge's favorite perfume was Chanel number no. five. Um, so every morning before the show, the competitor would spray their cat with the Chanel number no. five perfume, just little things like that to try and, you know, sway the judge's opinion. Um, I'm not saying do that. Um, I use a cat safe, uh, perfume spray on my guys. Um, and I'm going to run you through exactly what you'll need, um, on show day, where I've got the products from, how much the products are. Um, and yeah, I'll get kind of stuck into that in a second um, I'll cut to a different clip of me doing that um, but yeah so you know if, if you're in the market for a pedigree cat doesn't really matter what breed um, definitely you know you should always ask for the breeders prefix and it always does help if the breeder has show experience themselves um, you know I find if if a breeder hasn't really had show experience they don't really know exactly how to get to that standard of what's you know listed um, you know, it's taken me five years just to get some decent quality cats that are doing well on the bench. My first couple of years of showing, they're a bit up and down. Um, it's taken a long time because the judges do critique. So, you know, if you find that the cats are, you know, their tails are a little bit too short and that's a genetic fault, then you can go out and you can fix that um, and then try again next year. So I do a lot of shows. I do Sydney Royal as well every year. Um, so I do have some kind of experience to back me up on that. Um, I'm not going to get too stuck into how to prepare the cat for showing. Um, I'll make that in a different video, like regarding grooming and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to cut to the different video now um, with all the things that you will need on the day and some things that are handy to have um, that you wouldn't really expect to kind of have to bring um, that have saved my butt a few times. Um, and yeah, so I'll cut to that now and thank you for watching so far. Hey guys, so just following on from my previous clip, um, I've got my Tiki Blue Velvet here who is a Berman and she will be my little model for today. So this is basically um, what I usually use to set up at a cat show. So this crate here, this is just a 30 dollars crate from Kmart. You are allowed to use these. Uh, some people hate them, some people love them. I personally like them because there is more room in them. Um, so you can have room here for a litter tray. Um, and yeah, plenty plenty more room compared to some other cages you can, you can get. Um, now with the curtains, um, basically, which is these bits of material here, um, it's always a good idea to coincide your curtain color. Um, they come in a whole range of different colors. You can get them custom made. These ones were custom made for one of my rag dolls. Um, I just like the white because I tend to put any cat in there um, and it works well. So, but you can get different colored uh, curtains. Um, I can send some, like put some links down below in the description of some curtain makers um, that are in Australia. Um, it's always a great idea to get a set. So you do need a base um, and the base is just this cushiony fabric here so that obviously just sits on the bottom there and then your actual curtains here um, they tie in just with little bows and stuff on the top um, and then you've got your bed so everything um, flows so everything's like matching and nice and stuff um, some things that you know are nice to have but you don't need um, this is a cage number holder so you, when you get your little number you just clip it onto there in the morning and it just sits onto the crate like that and also these little dangly fancy things here. Um, they're just good to, you know, entertain the cat, make the cage look a little bit prettier. You can just use a keychain, like this one's just like a $2 keychain. So it doesn't really matter. Um, I can send some links to the lady who makes these ones. Um, they're quite nice and, you know, gets Velvet's attention. She quite enjoys them. Um, now, another couple of things that you, it's a good idea to have um, are these. They're basically, so these are teasers. Um, it's a good idea. There's many different types. You can get like the feather one, you know, this little holographic one that I've got here or this one here. 
Um, it's a good idea, whatever cat you're going to take to a show, um, pick some teasers and find out which one works best for the cat. Um, and you'd want to take that teaser with you on the day. So basically just before a judge comes around when you're still allowed in, um, you know, you kind of wake the cat up a little bit, especially if they're sleeping. So Velvet's now kind of in attack mode with this little, maybe not, with this little teaser here. She's never seen this teaser before, so she's got no idea what's going on. Um, yep, so they're a good idea to have just to get the cat's focus and attention and stuff. Now, Velvet's been to a fair few shows, um, not with myself because I've just purchased her, so she knows the drill. She's quite quite relaxed. She knows all the tricks, so she's a good girl. Um, but, yeah, so that's basically your crate set up. So when, when it's time to bench, what you want to do is just set the crate up, tie your curtains in, put your base in and put your bed in, um, and then put your cat in. So you can focus on fixing up the cat's grooming or whatever you have to do later. Um, as I said, I'll put another video up probably next week or something, you know, regarding grooming. I can't get through absolutely everything in one video. Um, but this video is just, you know, what you need on the day. So I'll just lock Velvet in there for now. She's quite happy to check out what's going on in there anyway. Um, so I also bring just this little Tupperware box just with some, I guess, emergency supplies. So I use two different types of cat shampoo. They're both pe uh, perfume, sorry. They're both pet safe. Um, so those are the two that I use. Um, you've got some little, you know, scissors here just to cut off any bits of fur that you might need to. Just do some finishing touches things like that. Um, claw clippers. Now, before you even go to a show, you should always clip your cat's nails the night before. Um, they will be completely disqualified if they show up with sharp, sharp claws. So it's always good to have a pair of these handy, um, just in case you haven't even done one claw short enough or whatever, you've, you know, you can save the day. Um, because I've got the rag dolls and the Berman, um, it's always a good idea to have some baby powder. So one time in particular that this saved me was at Nationals, um, and one of the cats had an accident. Um, so I had to wash their bum quickly. Obviously, I didn't have a hairdryer at the time, but sprinkling some powder, you know, on her butt um, dried it up instantly. So it's always a good idea just to have some baby powder on hand for emergencies. Um, definitely a good idea, actually. Um, so in here, I've just got some brushes. Um, this one I use for removing loose hair. This one I use for an all-out groom and also some baby wipes. Um, baby wipes will also save the day if there is any accidents. Um, also, I usually have a few like reusable plastic bags in here just to collect used litter and stuff on the day as well. Um, and I also travel with my Royal Cannon um, bag as well. So we've got litter trays in here and also um, some Ozpet cat litter. I always take this to a show and obviously a couple of bowls just for food and water and stuff through the day. Um, also, you will need a crate, definitely. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to be able to get your cat there. Um, so this is basically all you will need um, for the show day. So main main thing with your curtains is to get them custom fitted. So make sure when you do send off your request for some curtains, um, you know, with the lady that makes them or whoever you're getting to make the curtains, you get the cage dimensions right. Um, I know for a fact with the Kmart crate, the dimensions are on the Kmart website under the listing for this particular crate. So, you know, if you just want to copy paste them, send them to the lady who's making your curtains. Otherwise, usually um, curtain sets are made smaller for the usual kind of standard um, you know, cat show crates, and they, they are a lot smaller. So you definitely want to get that done. Um, now, one thing I don't have pictured in this video that you definitely do need, um, you need something on the sides and the back of your crate. Um, a lot of people use like cauliflower, which is basically like the same signs in um, used in like real estate. Oh, look, Velvet loves it now. Um, in real estate posters, and they just zip tie them to the sides of the cage. Um, this is basically because when the cat is benched, it is quite tight. So there's cats literally right right here up against your cage. Um, and it's basically, number one, to stop the spread of diseases or anything like that, and also to de-stress the cat. So that way they can't kind of fight through their cages and things like that, so they won't be able to kind of come in contact with each other. Um, I do have wrap around kind of PVC material things. Um, I'll show you guys them in the next video, but don't stress too much. Just honestly, um, cauliflower zip tied to the sides and rear of the cage is enough um, to get you through. Um, so yeah, also make sure you do bring a bottle of water to fill up your water just in case there isn't 
any um, water like you know on the day that you can use usually there is but you never know um, and also just a stash of of food for your cat um, so this is basically all you need um, for your first show um, it is a good idea if it is your very very first show um, set up your crate at home with everything in it and leave your cat in there for a good 10 minutes just even if it's just once a day just to get them used to it like velvet's quite happy in here um, you know some cats do freak out in crates and also their travel crates you know you, it's showing you know supposed to be a really fun good experience and it's not supposed to really stress yourself or the cat out um, you know it's supposed to be a good time and yeah you don't want to make a bad experience for the cat because usually if you do have a bad experience your first show um, it can kind of cause like a bit of PTSD for your cat and you, yeah you don't want to do that so it's all about having fun and your cat kind of having fun and getting some good exposure and things like that so don't put too much pressure on yourself or your cat or cats um and yeah just just try and make the most of it and have a good day and if you do have any questions like i said just ask anyone there usually like people are happy to help um or you know speak to like whoever's running the show um they will probably be able to help you more than other people because you know on on the morning of a show it is quite stressful and everyone's kind of running around crazy and things like that um so this is basically what you need so you need the crate um a bed a base the curtains these little pretty things aren't necessary but they are good to have um just a box to keep your belongings in um i haven't had mine labeled but it is a good idea to label them um some little smelly perfumes some teasers that your cat enjoys litter tray um you know more kind of accessories and a crate and that's basically all you need um it is a good idea also bring your cat's documentation so they do need to be up to date with vaccinations uh a dissexing certificate if your cat is entered in the dissexing category or group four um, and also pedigree papers if your cat is a pedigree cat and you've entered them as a pedigree cat. So um, for each cat here, I've got folders, like individual folders. So if I'm taking, you know, Velvet here to a show, I'll bring Velvet's folder with her for the day. Sorry about that last bit, guys. And I am sorry for these shocking camera angles that I am putting you all through as well. Um, so just one last thing I did forget to add in. Um, before judging, you should never uh, offer your cat a litter tray um, purely because sometimes it does encourage them to go. Um, and also, um, it creates a mess. So if they get litter stuck to them and stuff, it can definitely, you know, influence whether or not you win or not. Um, so we always tend to put our litter trays in once the final judge has come around. Or if there's a lunch break between judging, that's when we offer our cat's litter tray. Um, there have been instances, you know, where the cat starts scratching around and stuff and really looks like it needs to go. Um, you can quickly pop it in there as long as the judge isn't, you know, right there. Um, and let your cat use litter tray and then quickly take it away. Um, you know, there are exceptions made. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys again for watching um, my first video. I do appreciate it. And I do apologize for the shocking editing and stuff. This isn't really my scene. Um, but I hope it's helped you guys get some information about showing. Um, and hopefully it's encouraged a few more people to join in. Because um, not many people are, are doing it at the moment. And it is lots of fun. So any questions, just, you know, comment down below. Um, and please subscribe as well. Um, the more subscribers I get, you know, it is encouraging um, to make more videos. So thank you very much and talk to you guys soon. Bye.